Good evening. Send forth your spirit, O oh Lord, that the face of the earth be renewed. Today is the vigil of the Pentecost. And so is the beginning of the birth of the church. The Pentecost Sunday comes up 10 days after the ascension, 50 days after the resurrection, and it was the day the church was born. The church is the gift of the Holy Spirit to the world. The perpetuation of Christ in our midst, who had said on the day of ascension, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of time. On this day, different gifts were given to the church. Charismatic gifts, theological gifts, and organizational gifts. The Pentecost Sunday, therefore, is our celebration, is our feast, because that was the day we all are born into Christ. In the first reading of today, we hear all the nations of the earth heard them in their own language. Cretans, Pontus, Asia, part of Senene, Egypt, Arab, North America, everywhere they heard their disciples speaking their language. So the Pentecost was the first United Nations. So when you are talking about the United Nations, you think of the Pentecost. And you think of the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church was actually United Nations. The Pentecost is very, very important in the life of the church. As I've said, it is our feast. It is our celebration. Without the Pentecost, there is no church. And so you cannot be a Christian without the Pentecost. In the second reading of today, St. Paul reminds us in that beautiful letter to the Corinthians, no one can say Jesus is Lord unless you are under the influence of the Holy Spirit. So without the Holy Spirit, you cannot say Jesus is Lord. If you are afraid to say Jesus is Lord, it is because you do not have the Holy Spirit. Sometimes ago, I was traveling in a bus in America, United States of America. And a lady walked into the church, into the bus, took her seat. Then she opened her purse. I was looking at her. She brought out something, a pamphlet. He hung it somewhere in the church, in the bus. That was very, very courageous for me. And the, what was written on the pamphlets, do you know about my Jesus? Very, very courageous. She left that seat and she went to another seat and hung another pamphlet, another inscription about Jesus. She moved closer to where I was sitting. She sat the opposite side of where I was sitting. She hung another thing. I was looking at her, then I turned my eyes, and agitation was going in my mind. Then after about five minutes we were riding in the bus, she turned to me and gave me the pamphlet. I said, no, I didn't take the pamphlet from her. She was not offended. She kept quiet. 
and she was doing some other things. And I told her, I said, I know Jesus. I said, do you, know, do you mean my Jesus? I said, no, my Jesus. I now told her, I said, my Jesus. Then I let her know that I am a Christian, I am a priest. And she was very, very happy. So she was now comfortable. There were other people on the other side. And she reached out to them and gave them the pamphlet. And I was just, what was going on in my mind was, a Catholic will never do this. A Catholic will never do this. Sometimes, out of courtesy, we don't want to disturb anybody. Out of courtesy. But most of the time, because of timidity, because we are afraid, because we are afraid for the fear of what others will say, we share any message on our platform with anybody, especially erotic message, immoral messages. We share it so freely. But when it comes to about our religion, about our faith, we feign courtesy. We pretend as if it's out of courtesy. The Jews, locked, I mean, the disciples of Jesus, locked themselves up in the upper room for fear of the Jews. But on Pentecost Sunday, they opened the door, went straight to the synagogue, and preached to the people. They were arrested. They were beaten. They never gave up again. St. Paul, during this week, reading from the Acts of Apostles, I think chapter 22, when he was leaving Ephesus, said he had finished the race, he spoke with the people about many things. He said, I don't know where I am going, but the Holy Spirit has revealed to me that chains and persecution await me. Yet he was going on. Despite the chains, the revelation, that he was going to be shamed. He was going to face persecution because he was under the influence of the Holy Spirit. If you are not under the influence of the Holy Spirit, your faith is not complete. And that reminds me of a story of some young children in the school that I cherish so much about the Holy Spirit. These children, puppies, were in their class. In those days, when people believe. So the teacher was teaching them about the creed. And he was teaching them one by one, stanza by stanza. The first person will say, I believe in, I believe in one God. The next person will say, Father Almighty. The next person will say, Maker of heaven and earth. Of things visible and invisible. And they recite like that. And after some time, the puppies got to know the creed off by heart on top of their head. They could recite it. One day, the teacher came to the class and as usual, they started reciting their creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, and they were reciting. Suddenly, they stopped and nobody could say anything. The teacher told them, courage, yo, courage, courage. I mean, you know this thing? Then one of the small boys who was bold enough raised his hand. Excuse me, sir. The boy who believed in the Holy Spirit is not here today. The teacher was wondering, what do, what do you mean? He said, yes, the boy who believed in the Holy Spirit is not in the class. He was sick. And the teacher said, what happened? Because that was the boy who used to say, I believe in Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. The, the boy who was to say, I believe in Holy Spirit, was not in the class. And so, the class thought that the boy, the only boy who believed in the Holy Spirit did not come to school that day. They have forgotten that all of them believed in the Holy Spirit. The boy only recites 
that part. That is the way many Catholics behave. We behave as if the Holy Spirit belongs to some group of people. At our baptism, we were anointed with Christian oil of the Holy Spirit. At our confirmation, we did one about a month ago, here, right here. The bishop anoints your head with the Christian oil and breathes on you and says, Receive the Holy Spirit. So at our confirmation, we all received the Holy Spirit. At our baptism, we received it. At ordination, we received it. At episcopal ordination, the bishops receive it. So we all believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a prerogative of some people. What still, the Holy Spirit does not belong to any other church except the Catholic Church. Don't mind the Pentecostals. If there is a church that is supposed to be called Pentecostal, it is the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church was born on the Pentecost day. So the Holy Spirit belongs to us. But we have left the Holy Spirit. And this is why we cannot go on mission. This is why we are afraid. This is why we have become timid about our faith. Today, St. Paul is reminding us again that beautiful passage in the letter to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Fan into flame the spirit you received when the elders laid their hand on you. Today the church is reminding us we should fan into flame the spirit we received at our confirmation, at our baptism, at our ordination. We should not be timid people. We should be ready to go on mission for God. We should be ready to say Jesus is Lord. This is the gift that the Pentecost has given to us. One of the gifts. We should put that gift into use. We should not keep it. We should not hide it. We should use it. We should discuss about Jesus in our family. Let us discuss with our children. Let us discuss with our friends about Jesus. On the Pentecost day, God united the nations, as I've said at the beginning. The Pentecost day was the first united nation. At the Tower of Babel, the Lord scattered us all over the nations. There was disunity. There was division. The people could not hear themselves again. On the Pentecost day, all the nations under heaven heard themselves speaking. And today, we can all speak in that language. I'm from Africa. I'm here right now. The Santos family are from Filipino. From, and they are here singing for us. You are here too. The Indians are here. The Caribbeans are here. Everybody, all, all the nations. We have diversity. There's unity in diversity. The Pentecost brings out that unity. Because it is a gift of peace. And so Jesus told his disciples today, anywhere you go, say to them, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. So the Pentecost is a sign of unity. The second reading today says that there are different parts in the body, but all work together for the unity of the human person the eyes, the hand. If you want to know that any member of your body is important, go and wound it. Wound it. Wound any part of your body. It is then you will know what you are enjoying. This time last year, I was having ache in my tooth. I could not sleep. I could not sleep. I woke up very early in the morning, I started calling people who, can, who could help me. I needed a doctor to do something immediately. Ordinary tooth. Because every part of the body is very, very important. They all work together. Once one of the bodies down tools, you are gone. 
you will feel it so seriously. And that is what Jesus is telling us in the readings of today. We are very, very important, all of us. We must contribute to build up the body of Christ. Everybody, the choir, the welcoming minister, the readers, the priests, the listeners, all of us are very, very important. If you do not come, there will not be mass. If I have not here too, there will not be mass. If he has not come to read, then there will be crisis. If they do not sing, the church will be dull. If there is nobody to operate the, the, the lift. But everybody is doing something. So the question you should ask yourself today is, what are you doing? Don't be an onlooker. There is a place for you in this church. There is a mission for you. If we are talking of mission, let us not think that we have to go to Africa or it is doing something right now here to build this place. That is a mission. Whatever you do to make this place welcoming to everybody, you are on mission. And you are contributing to the missionary enterprise of the church. If you encourage somebody to come to church who otherwise will not have come, if you visit those who are already stale or who are tired and encourage them, these are different missions we can do today. Before the COVID, people were coming. After the COVID, people are used to watching the television. Today, you can walk to them and tell them there is a place for, for you in the church. Come back. These are different missions that we are called to do today. Let us pray at this month that God will give us the courage and the strength and a new fanning into flame, a new energy. That is the Holy Spirit. You know, in our creed, the Holy Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life. Let us pray for that, the Lord and the giver of life, to energize us, to strengthen us, and to pour his saving grace on us once again. May God bless us today and always. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.